As Christians, there are certainly different kinds of children. There are children that we have biologically. I have daughters. They're my children. There are children in the faith, meaning that they're immature in some sense. Something about the Christian life and God they may not understand. And there are children in the faith because somebody has shared the gospel with them and they were saved and believed, or that person has been the one that God has used to teach them foundational truths and bring them along in their Christian life. And we're going to look at, I believe, people in this last category today in our study here in 2 John. I'm Pastor Tim Holsher, and yesterday we started a study in 2 John. We looked at this, uh, my understanding that this chosen lady, I believe, or elect lady is actually a real woman. Um, and I suggested that I think that maybe she had a role with regard to these children. Not necessarily they're her biological children, but perhaps her spiritual children. In fact, it's interesting if you read uh, Second John or First John, that John actually references believers as my little children or little children. And he sees a relationship that he has to those people. And he's not talking about his biological kids. If we go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, we've got a number of passages I want to look at. Paul says in verse 14, I do not write these things to shame you, but to admonish you as my beloved children. Well, the Corinth Paul didn't have a bunch of biological kids running around in Corinth. But the, but the Corinthians, he evangelized that city. He went in there and he gave the gospel starting in the synagogue and then outside. And so he looked at these people as children. Go down to verse 17. He says, For this reason I have sent to you Timothy, who is my beloved and faithful child in the Lord. Timothy was one of those that on Paul's first missionary journey, when he passed through Derby, Lystra area, he had shared the gospel. And when he returns back, he finds Timothy, who has been a, who is now a disciple, having believed Paul's message and has now become somebody what somewhat noteworthy. But it was through Paul's ministry. And I think not just the, that Paul is one that shared the gospel, but if you look, in fact, I have a, a good friend that uh, demonstrated here just uh, uh, yesterday at our church that um, uh, that Timothy and Paul are seen together in so many texts throughout the New Testament that Timothy really cut his teeth, his spiritual teeth. He was trained under Paul in terms of biblical truth, in terms of God's plan and God's design. So he looks at him as his spiritual child. And we have that again in 2 Timothy chapter 2. And uh, um, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1, to Timothy, my dear child, or my beloved child. So he refers to him there also. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul says of the Thessalonians, he says, just as you know how we were exhorting and encouraging you and imploring each of you, and this word that's translated implore is, is testifying, and the word that's translated encourage, we have in, exhorting, that's the word I would translate encourage, the second word that's translated encourage is like a comforting, soothing thing. And I would, re, would suggest the reason there's comforting and soothing was because persecution came on. Remember, some men in the church were grabbed and had to put up a bond, and the people were basically threatened, you need to shut this Paul up. And so Paul had encouraged and soothed them and was testifying to each one of them, as a father would his own children. Think of a father, a biological father, had children, and there was something kind of scary going on. You need to encourage them, but you need to soothe them all at this and encourage them to keep doing or uh, testify for them to keep doing the right thing. That you would, how you would handle them. And Paul says, we handled you like our, like uh, would his own children. Now, he doesn't say, here you are my children. He doesn't do that like he does in 1 Corinthians. But he says, that's why I look at you like a father with his own children. And that's why I handled you. In fact, up above, he says, we dealt with you like a, a mother would, a nursing mother would do with her nursing infant, uh, he says. If we go over to Titus, Titus chapter 1 and verse 4, he says to Titus, my true child, my genuine child in a common faith. So he looks at Titus as, again, another one that Paul had, I would say, twofold not only evangelized, but it also trained him, uh, given him biblical instruction. And then John himself in 3 John, 
he writes, if you go back up here to verse 1, he is writing to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. But if we go down to verse 4, he says, people have come and they've told us, hey, Gaius is walking in truth. And Paul says, or John, excuse me, John, pardon me, I have no greater joy than this to hear, notice, my children walking in truth. We have the here, but it's just truth. There's no definite article. There's not a, a textual problem or anything. Hear my children walking in truth. When you hear about believers that you have had the opportunity of evangelizing and or involved in teaching them, shall we say, foundational truths for the Christian life, and then you find that they're actually living in that truth. Walking in truth doesn't just mean that they are, that they have some truth and they just hold the truth and they're really clear on their doctrine. I believe he's talking about the fact that it affects the way they live. That's the idea of walking. It comes out. They're living what they know. And he says, calls him, well, he says it's my children in general, but my children, he's applying that to Gaius too. And yet Gaius is not his biological son. So having said this, looking at this way that Paul used this word and that John uses the word, we go back over there to chapter, uh, uh, second John, excuse me, I was going to say chapter one, but it's just second John. There's only one chapter to the chosen lady and her children. And I'm just going to suggest, I think when it says into her children, though it could include some of her biological children, I think there's also a really good chance that these are talking about believers that she has led to the Lord and has been training them in the present truth, in the things of the Lord, teaching them who they are in Christ, teaching them about Christ's indwelling in eternal life, teaching them about what it means to be a child of God. She's been training them in these things. And John says, the lady and the children whom I love in truth, and not I only, but also all who know, now he says here, the truth. In other words, those that actually know the truth, they know how to depend on God. They know how to let God really do his work in their life exactly as God has set out. He says, they also, they also would love you and your children. And that should be the way we are. When we receive word of others that God has used to communicate the gospel or others that God has used to train people in the faith, in living the Christian life, in what God is doing, we ought to rejoice in those things. And we, even though we don't maybe see them, even though they may be at a distance, we ought to love them in truth, which means we do for them what we can. We support them in whatever way we can. Even if it means they're on the other side of the world, the only thing we can do is to pray for them. And as one of my friends says, meet them at the right hand. You know what that means? Well, we're all at the Father's right hand, even if we're on opposite sides of the planet. Or even if one of us has gone home, we get to meet together at the Father's right hand. And he says, and I love them in truth, but I'm not the only one. All those that know the truth, they do the same. We'll come back and we'll look at what John is concerned with for this woman and those believers that she has at this time has some charge with regard to. And we'll continue looking at how this is going to follow a little bit on the heels of what John has just said in 1 John about watching out for some dangers. As always, have a good day in the Lord. And thank you for joining me.